Hello and welcome back to the Master Division of the International Championship. Now the second game has finished and it's a three player game against Ram and Snail Sane. And as I said in the first video of the new International Championship season, um, I am probably better in three player games than in four player games. So I really want uh, to score as many points in three player games as possible. So I would be very happy if I'm able to win this game. Of course I won the first 4 player game, but there was definitely quite some luck involved, so I don't think I really can take this as an indicator that my 4 player game has improved compared to the last seasons. Yeah, so I uh, yeah, definitely want to um, use the 3 player games to score quite a lot of points and hopefully I will be able to score points in the 4 player games as well. Now, yeah, and let's first of all take a uh, we are gonna take a look at the uh, Leaders and Wonders. And in H3 we have Marlene Dietrich, Fleming and Hollywood, also the internet is there, there's also Gandhi. Then we have the, um, um, Einstein, no, uh, Spaceflight is there, also no fast food chains, so the two wonders that uh, don't need a lot of setup um, aren't in the game. Churchill is there, Mandela is there, Red Cross is available. In H2 we have the Ocean Liner Service, we have Maria, so that's a nice combination. We have some culture leaders with Bach and Shakespeare. We have Cook, but no uh, Suez Canal. We have Newton and Nobel, some science leaders, and Catherine for military action. In H1 we have John of Arc and Shishka for the military action. We have Columbus. We also have Leonardo and Gutenberg for some lab and printing press synergy. And then maybe Isabella is just a solid um, leader of or maybe a colonization strategy. And then from the Wonders we have Himeji Castle and Great Wall, the two Strength Wonders, also Silk Road and Universitas, so some Economy Wonders, also the Machu Picchu. I'm in the first position and I took the Rome Roads here. I could also just take the Engineering Genius because with taking the Rome Roads I give Colosseum and Engineering Genius to Bram and I didn't really like to give both of those cards to him. But on the other hand, if I take the Engineering Genius, maybe I can take one of those leaders, elect the leader, build a mine, increase pop, and take one of the leaders at the, uh, one of the remaining wonders at the next turn. But if the pyramids don't come out, then I don't really like this too much. I mean, the Stonehenge is fine, Acropolis also, but I really rather prefer it here to just get the Rome roads. Also, there is a small chance that I might get Cleopatra, Bram uh, very likely will take Colosseum and Engineering Genius. And then there is no other wand on the card row, so maybe Snail Sane uh, doesn't want to go for Cleo because of that. I still think Cleo would be a nice pick, because the other leaders are maybe not that great, but he could maybe go for Ashoka instead. So, no. Bram indeed goes for Colosseum and Engineering Genius, that definitely seems like the correct decision. And then Snail Sane interestingly just goes for Boudicca and I'm really not sure if this is the correct choice. There is still Caesar on the card row and Bram has no leader yet, so Bram... I also don't have a leader yet, but I won't take Caesar for two, but Caesar will be available for one uh, at Bram's turn and he might just go for him. Um, and with, together with the Colosseum maybe I can go for a little bit of an aggressive approach to the game. And then Boudicca yeah, is a little bit awkward, because you don't really want to spend a resource that early into military. So just taking Cleo and Patriotism and then going for one of the other wonders that will come out. Uh, both me and Bram have already a wonder, so there will be one wonder available. Of course he doesn't know at what spot and maybe he has to take two civil, act uh, pay two civil actions for it. But I think it should, mm, yeah, there should be a reasonable chance that he can take a wonder for one civil action at his next turn. He could also think about Ashoka, but I don't, I'm not really sure what I think should think about as a Boudicca pick. Of course Boudicca might help against the aggressive Caesar, maybe Bram won't go for Caesar, and then Boudicca might be fine, but yeah, I uh, think Boudicca might not be the correct decision here. Also that means that I will be able to get Cleo and, and that's also a very nice combination with the Rome Roads and I just decided to start building the, uh, on the Rome Roads. I could also build a lab first, increase my population and then um, I start with the Rome Roads at the next turn but I, uh, yeah, I just think getting the Rome Roads out of the way is very strong so that you uh, are more freely with your civil actions later on. Also there could be a chance uh, uh, maybe the possibility to finish it at the next turn and take one of those wonders, but I didn't really plan for this and I think mo most of the times taking two HA wonders is not really the way to go. 
But if the pyramid should be still available, which I think is quite unlikely, then that could be an idea. And then I draw the new deposits, net rate routes agreement. Rum goes for Caesar, indeed. So maybe because of Boudicca, or maybe he doesn't like Aristotle too much. And then he builds a mine and increases his population. Pyramids falls down to one for Snail Sane. And then he will grab it, build the mine, increases his population. First he goes for Boudicca and then increases his population, so nothing unusual. That means, however, that Code of Laws will fall down to 1 for me, that's definitely nice. I see the new deposits in, because with additional resources, or for example the development of civil life, I could finish the Rome roads and uh, build my mine. Sadly, none of those developments is open, but instead the development of warfare. But it's also not bad, I have an additional yellow token from the Rome roads, and can definitely afford putting one population into warrior. And then I can finish the Rome roads this turn, can take the Code of Laws and increase my population. I draw one colonization card and a legion. Ram seats and the development of crafts is opened. And he also can take the development of warfare, takes the monarchy and just finishes the Colosseum. If he wants to take the warrior, he can't really build a lab, so he has to finish his one. And if he wants to finish his one, there's not enough civil actions left to take the knights, so instead he just grabs the monarchy and maybe the next turn he can then build his lab. Then Snail Sane also seeds, so the deck might flip very fast and opens the development of settlement. And he gets the free warrior, but that means he can't really use the two resources of Boudicca, which is a little bit unfortunate for him. Builds one stage of the pyramids, takes masonry, alchemy, and the knights. A lot of technologies. Question is whether he will have the necessary signs for it, but he can use the masonry maybe in the pyramids and then maybe save some resources in the alchemy, so it's definitely synergizing. Uh, together and also the knights of course an important technology to have i have cleo so i want to have another wonder or something to be able to work um, to use the additional resources i could just take the alchemy and this turn i also can just build the second lab finally but with getting the free extra warrior with having the legion in hand i just think the great wall is a very very strong wonder so I grab the Great Wall here, and then I can build the lab, and I could also just build um, the mine. But instead I decided to go for one um, warrior and reveal the legion tactic. And then I have one civil action left and can take the breakthrough. The thing is that um, if I don't do this I stay too strengthened. If Bram pushes two times, then Snail Sign could push and I could get punished by a strength event. So that is one reason for that. The other reason is that I can take this breakthrough. I think that's quite strong for me to get it for one civil action. Because when I want to develop the Code of Laws, and if I develop the Code of Laws without a breakthrough, then I would be very low in science. So the breakthrough really helps a lot with this. And then at the next turn, I maybe can finally build my third mine. I skip the iron, but I just think I have other and better things to do here. And also it's not that bad to give it to Bram because he is, is, is very low in science and I don't uh, really know if iron is even the best thing for him to go for. So I don't really think I have to deny it here. At the next turn I might be a little bit unflexible because I kind of want to build my mine finally. Uh, and so I kind of have to increase my population two times, build a mine. If I also want to use glue I can then build one stage of the Great Wall. So that would be a, could be a turn that I can do it the next turn but I can't really grab anything. So that's maybe not ideal but uh, still I decided to go for this line. Bram seeds and opens the development of Great Roots. He takes the iron, says not enough science to go for this turn, but builds a lab this turn and maybe can go for it at the next turn. Takes the rich land, reveals the leech and also goes for another warrior, so he wants to be strongest. I'm not really sure if I agree about this rich land, I think the breakthrough might be stronger for him. With building another warrior that doesn't make the difference at the next turn at least between going for two or one upgrade. Of course that also depends on what development might be opened. And I th just think it's the same reason as for me with the Code of Laws. When he wants to develop the iron, he will be very low on science, and then a breakthrough could really help him quite a lot. So I think that uh, is probably the better card for him than the rich land. 
Snellsane also sees, so the deck flips now, the development of planning is opened. And the options for this are, oh, I have to stop this, the options for this are development of politics, science or civil life. Now, yeah, civil life is definitely what I will choose because, um, uh, yeah, as I said, I have a lot to do and this development of civil life helps me with that. Snail Saint finally can now use the additional resources from Boudicca for his military. Uh, before that Boudicca basically did nothing. And then he takes the breakthrough and the urban growth needs also very low in science now. So yeah, he might have to, has to find a way how to somehow increase the science production or to get more science to be able to develop more technologies. This turn I offered a trade routes agreement to Snails and I actually didn't expect him to accept this. And it's also, as you can see, I uh, choose the site where I can use resources as food, which seems a little bit odd, because I have uh, a lot of food saved up, and at the moment I'm at two mines, but with Clio, with the Rome Roads, and the third mine that I will build this turn, I will beat four resources, to, together with Clio basically at five resource production. And with the Great Wall, I just think having a lot of additional population might be nice, and this pack might help me to get one more population out. And so I wanted to be this side of the pack. I didn't really uh, expect Snail Saint to accept because if he starts using food as resources, then um, yeah, he can't increase his population. Uh, really, uh, but maybe uh, um, yeah, um, I thought he might accept this, and I also don't have anything else to do with my politics action. Um, I didn't really, I really want, didn't want to offer it to Bram because the, being able to use one food as resource would allow him two upgrades instead of one. And no, yeah, none of this would allow this to him. No, yeah. and then this turn I can use the pact immediately to increase my population. I can increase my population another time. Finally, build a uh, mine and also build one stage of the Great Wall with the development of civil life. I developed a code of laws and that enables me now to um, pick another uh, card if I want to. And I decided to pick the irrigation. Also the same argument, uh, getting more population is nice for the Great Wall. And um, yeah, then I also have something to upgrade, I get it for one civil action. All of the cards that I took from H1 up to this point, I were able to get from the one civil action area, the Great Wall, Code of Laws, and those two cards. And if possible, that's always nice to do. Of course, some key cards sometimes have to be grabbed for two civil actions, but the more you can take for one, the better. And uh, I use one resource um, to increase my population, but I still have enough to finish the Great Wall the next turn with Cleo's resources, but then I can't increase my population with the Pact, so maybe I just won't increase my population, or I will increase it and just don't use the Pact at the next turn. Then I draw another colonization card, which is nice, and a border conflict. Prom seats and the immigration is open, that gives him another population. Sadly, um, it was revealed before I can finish the Great Wall. He seeds another time and a good harvest is revealed, so two food for everyone. He goes for the iron and then he actually builds a fourth mine, which is quite interesting. I mean, there was the development of settlement, he has the additional happy face from the Colosseum, maybe he doesn't really need more uh, units into military at the moment, and then it's, you know, it's the, increases his resource production by more this turn, and maybe he's also looking at the Universitas and might want to get his wonder the next turn, and then the additional resource production might make a difference. Um, for example, now in two turns he will have 10 resources with only one upgrade. Oh, I guess, but then he would have paid less for the upgrade. So, yeah, in both scenarios, he could finish the Universitas, not at the next turn, but at the turn after that. But still, he will produce some additional resources. But it's also, he commits one additional worker to it, so we will see how this will work out. Then he also picks the Irrigation and Isabella. And Isabella maybe indicates that there are some colonies in the deck. Snailsen again can this turn use uh, his um, the ability of Boudicca, saves two resources again, so at least Boudicca is now given four additional resources, which is not bad. And maybe also Snailsen had knowledge about a good harvest, because uh, with that knowledge uh, he can increase his population and he was still able to use the pact. 
And then he picks the universal test, and that is, I think, very strong for him to uh, somehow get his science production up, but also, uh, I think, an important denial pick, because it would be a very strong, wonderful Brum, and I can't really deny it, so... Yeah, I think that's the correct choice from Snail Saint to go for the Universal Test, and if he can use uh, Boudicca, um, if no mm, Bram doesn't get stronger and I doesn't get stronger and don't get stronger, then um, he can even finish the Universal Test. On the other hand, it's um, I will finish the Great Wall, so that won't be the case. And this turn I can finish the Great Wall, I increase my population once without using the Pact, and then I have one civil action left, and I choose to go for the iron here. And I'm not totally sure if this is the correct pick, because an, another idea could be to grab the monarchy, and then I could do a revolution at the next turn, build a warrior to get out of corruption, get even more strength, get, uh, and then I would go into H2 with uh, three military actions, which would, be, which would be quite strong. So that definitely could be an idea. But I have five signs at the next turn, so I could uh, can also start upgrading my production. And yeah, I chose to do this. But a monarchy revolution would also be an idea. One problem with this, though, is that I still need an H1 leader. There are some strong ones, and if one of those is available, then I might skip the revolution. So maybe at the end, just going for the iron is also fine. But it might be difficult to find another uh, thing to work on for Cleopatra for the next turn. I do draw the medieval army, but at the moment, with having the Great Wall, I'm perfectly happy about my legion. Brum reveals the cultural influence. I gain one more culture out of this, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Brum uh, goes for Isabella, also goes for the Machu Picchu, grabs the Breton Circuses and upgrades one of his mines, and I'm really not sure if this Machu Picchu is the correct pick here for him. He's at four civil actions, he's very low on science, and I think those are the two things you need the most when you want to go for the Machu Picchu. Of course, he has iron, he has irrigation, but he has four workers on his mines already, so he really doesn't need the additional resource production. He also has Isabella, so I think the Machu Picchu maybe is not really the correct choice here for him. Maybe he doesn't really have anything nice to do, but he could maybe, for example, instead of taking Machu Picchu, maybe develop irrigation, do one upgrade, maybe increase his population and do something else. Um, no, but I think the Machu Picchu uh, might might cause some problems for him, because he will have too much resources, um, more resources than he can really spend. Snail Saint Seeds, and the knowledge of the Ancients is revealed, so uh, we both gain a similar amount of stuff. And additional resource actually allows Snail Saint to go for the Universal Test this turn, and he also can develop the Masonry, so that's very strong for him. And also, I forgot uh, this at the last turn, he could have finished it anyway, because of course we have the Trade Routes Agreement. So it could also have been an idea to cancel this pact, but I probably I didn't really think about it. And even if I th still think uh, I can get an additional population maybe out, because if I increase my population at the next turn for two, thanks to the pact, then I will have two left, produce one additional, and I have three left, and then I will be able to increase my population, even when it's in the next area of the yellow banks, I still think it's fine to, um, yeah. Uh, to not cancel the pact, and now with the knowledge of the ancients, Snail Saint can also finish the universal test, could have finished it without a pact. Then he can also build another knight, use the resource of Boudicca again. So he has now used six resources, but this turn he de has to delete a warrior after this, which is not ideal, and it really sh looks like he maybe has the heavy cavalry. Or he is hoping for Jan Shishka. Jan Shishka will stay on three for me, so it would be very expensive to grab him, and if he has the medieval army, then, um, yeah, then it's also, of course, a nice setup for Jan Shishka. And then he takes the theocracy and plays the cultural heritage. At this turn I could just start going for Iron, but I thought I, um, yeah, I might want to use Cleo again. And there are also some nice leaders for the printing press. Well, not that many, but there's Shakespeare. Later on there's Gandhi, there's the Hollywood, so and Fleming. So I think there is a reasonable amount of synergy. I have some additional workers, also thanks to uh, this pact. And um, yeah, the printing press allows me to use Cleo another time. I can develop the printing press, build one. 
increase my population with using the pact and I can develop the iron. Developing the iron as my last move is maybe a little bit questionable, but first of all there could be the dark ages, I have no knowledge about this. And But the main reason for this was that at the next turn um, if a leader is available on one civil action then it allows me to do a nice turn. Um, there are, it's not for sure that I can do this, but on top of the deck there is the new deposits. And if it, this is revealed while um, we are still in H1 and I get 4 resources out of it, thanks to the Rome Roads, then I will have 9 resources at the next turn and that would allow me to take the leader, elect the leader and just upgrade my mines 3 times, leaving me with very strong resource production and in general uh, yeah, quite a strong economy with 6 science and f uh, six resources and 4 science once the Rome Roads will switch in H2. So that's the reason why I developed the iron. On the other hand, it's also greedy, I think. Maybe I should instead just grab the swordsman. I have the great wall and it would be a shame if I miss out on the rifleman later on and can't go for a tactic because of that. But on the other hand, Bram, I think will, Bram will be very inflexible because of the Machu Picchu. He really, he really needs infantry technology as well, but maybe he will take the swordsman and maybe, um, and if not, then it's still, he might not be able to grab the rifleman for a lot of civil actions and snail saying. So also is, and still needs an infantry technology, but as I said, it kind of looked like he has heavy cavalry and then maybe the rifleman also is not the highest priority for him. So I was willing to take the risk of uh, missing out on the swordsman, but it's also dangerous and I'm not sure if it is the correct decision. And I do draw two more colonization cards with having two military actions. I have now four colonization cards in hand, which is kind of crazy. But if there's no colony revealed before my next turn, and it actually won't be because I can't push, and so Snail Sane might push the new deposits, uh, and so sadly I can't keep all of those. Bram can finish the Machu Picchu this turn, go up to 9 resource production, but yeah, we have to see if we will be able to spend those resources. Snail Sane's push, uh, which I was very happy to see because uh, the new deposits will allow me to go for this turn that I talked about. And Brom now actually gains 9 additional resources. We can take a look. He actually was able to take all of those, but uh, now all of his blue cubes are, um, no, uh, are out of his blue cube bank and it will be very difficult for him to spend all of those resources. Then Snail Sane um, goes for the alchemy. Upgrades one time very cheaply with the Pact and the Masonry. Dispends one of his warriors to go for another knight to use the resource of Budika again. But he is um, very low on... Um, yeah, he didn't really draw a lot of cards now, but he goes for John over Jan Shishka and it really shows that he indeed he has the Heavy Cavalry. Goes up to 12 strength now. And of course with having the Heavy Cavalry and no other tactic, and also with no other tactic that requires knight um, revealed, um, John should be the better pick than Jan Shishka, also with the Theocracy and in general getting the third military action. Yeah, uh, so Snail Sane is the strongest, uh, but I was also happy about this because that means that I can get Jan Shishka for one civil action. And the third military action of Jan Shishka will be quite nice. So I can go for Jan Shishka and as I said, then I can just upgrade three times, going up to six resource production. And that's definitely not bad. Of course I could think about the drama, but there's also one copy of Opera coming down the row and I have strong resource production, so I would prefer having up Operas. Then Bram offers me the Open Borders Agreement, which I happily accept. He goes for one Bread and Circuses, and increases population and then does two upgrades, so he was able to get out of corruption. And now he's at 11 resource production, so at the next turn again, now from now on every turn he will have the challenge to somehow get out of corruption. He's now very low in science after going for the bread and circuses and it might be very difficult for him uh, now at the following turns to get out of corruption. Snail Sane goes for the Theocracy this turn, he has no even more strength available. We'll um, not draw more cards, but for example if he draws an aggression he can go for that and still draw a reasonable amount of cards because Bram can't really increase his strength by that much, so that could definitely be something that uh, Snail Sane could try. 
And then he takes the coal and um, he has not enough science to go for it at the next turn, but it definitely will be nice for him at some point. This turn I offered a scientific cooperation to Snailsay and I think it's very strong for both of us. Because for, uh, for me it, the scientific cooperation allows to go for Republic this turn and then for selective breeding at the next turn. And for Snail Sane it allows to go for coal immediately the next turn. So I think uh, we both gain quite a lot of value out of this pact and so I offered it. Um, of course it could be that Snail Sane maybe gains a little bit more value out of it. But um, yeah, it, I also think that getting the Republic now and then going for selective breeding at the next turn would, will leave me in quite a strong position. So I can develop the Republic, grab the selective breeding, I could think about grabbing the breakthrough with having the science pact. But instead I rather wanted to have the Opera, because Bach is coming down the row. Both of the other players have no drama in hand, so there is only one copy of Opera left, and with only one copy left, it's a little bit risky for them to grab Bach, which means that I could get Bach at the next turn, and that you know, I think Bach could be very strong for me. And then I also grab the Knights. Instead I could just use the pack to increase my population finally. There could be the Reds, uh, there could, but there could also uh, still be the Rebellion, so I can't prepare for uh, both at the moment. And I, the Knights could still be nice for me, and I was a little bit afraid uh, with having no military uh, technology at all in hand. Maybe I should have grabbed the Swordsman earlier on. On the other hand, my plan kind of worked out with going for Jan Shishka and being able to upgrade three times. That gave me quite a boost. So, yeah, but I just thought uh, now that I have that many civil actions, I can spend one of them to take the knights. Oh, and actually, <laughs> uh, actually, the pact isn't, I don't have this pact any longer, so that is the main reason. I just can't increase my population. Um, or not the main reason, that is the only reason. Um, no. Because with offering the scientific cooperation, this pact is cancelled, but that's not too bad because I will be able to go for selective breeding at the next turn. With taking those cards, the Statue of Liberty falls down to one for Bram, and that actually allows him. First of all, um, I did build another warrior, I didn't talk about that, and the reason for that is that I can bid for a colony and still um, have a reasonable amount of strength to defend. Um, I don't uh, lose the Legion, if I, if I would not build a warrior and send one away I would not lose the Legion because of Jan Shishka, but still with the Great Wall every, every warrior gone is two strength less. And there is indeed a colony revealed and with that many colonization cards I am able to win it for just one warrior. And as I said with the statue on one, uh, Bram can take it and finish it immediately. So again he is able to spend all of his resources. And I mean, if he at the end is actually able to uh, do this a return, then of course having this strong resource production is very strong. Of course, it uh, leaves him inflexible because inflexible because um, he kind of has to do what gets him out of corruption a return and doesn't really have a lot of options, can't grab a lot of cards. But if he is able to spend all of this into something useful, then he might transition into a very strong position. For example, if he somehow gets some additional science and gets for, goes for scientific methods on the card row the next turn, then he gets some science up and then yeah, he could, um, the Metro Pitcher might work um, nicely for him after all. Snail Saint goes for a spy and Bram can't defend, so he loses five science and it really hurts him very, very much because he really needs every bit of science with uh, uh, every bit of science helps him to maybe spend resource from the Machu Picchu so that's a big drawback for him and then Snail saying thanks to the pact can go for coal and also I was not happy to see the spy of course it hurts Bram but I think Bram maybe after going for statue um, he is you know as, but I still thought the Machu Picchu might cause more problems than it uh, is useful for him so um, I didn't really, uh, uh, so it's maybe not that important from my perspective that Bram gets hit by the spy and uh, with having the scientific cooperation pact this additional science might steal one science from me. And then Snail Sane takes the fission upgrade so he can upgrade two times at the next turn which is definitely not bad. Um, but he uh, passes over the cannons, that means that I will be able to take the cannons 
which is very strong for me because I have the Great Wall. In this turn I see that the freedom of movement in, um, that might, I can, if I don't find uh, anything more useful, I can always transition just one lab into printing press, and, but there might also be some other options, for example transitioning into another tactic, so I was willing to see this in the detective crusades is revealed, so some culture strands are from Bram to a snail sane. In this turn, thanks to the science pack, I can go for the selective breeding, upgrade two times. I have quite a bunch of resources, thanks to the wealthy territory that I won. And then I can grab the cannons. I also really uh, was happy to see that I can get Bach for one civil action. With having the opera in hand, it might allow me to go for a lot of culture production. And then I also take the frugality and the wave. Especially when I'm transitioned to Bach, I might be able to use this for... Uh, six resources and it really might help me with the transition and the frugality is just um, yeah, I think I can really use some additional population because I have quite a bunch of resources available at the moment and then I rather prefer to be one more action efficient than the reserves and I rather have the flexibility of the reserves from opens to uncertain borders so one yellow token is transferred to snail sane and then Bram goes for Maria, elects her, increases uh, his population and takes the reserves, builds one warrior and also takes the cavalry man. Maybe the warrior will help him to, to, to defend against aggression. And Maria, he doesn't really need the additional resources from her, but additional signs might be very valuable, so definitely can understand his decision to go for her. And this time he, for the first time, can't get out of corruption and will have two corruption. Snail Saint rise another spy, but this time Bram is able to defend. And then Snail Saint goes for Newton, goes to scientific method, develops it, upgrades one of his mines, takes the cannons, develops the cannons as well, and then uh, goes for another upgrade to coal. So uh, interesting that he didn't upgrade one of his labs, that would be also quite a big boost, but maybe he wants to get his big resource production first. And with being Newton, I have to definitely be careful now about the pact. I'm down to two signs, and first I thought that I might just want to cancel the pact at the next turn. But I actually came to the conclusion after seeding the Civil unrest into the deck, I will fix my happy faces this turn. The Dark Ages is revealed, so maybe Snail Sane had knowledge about this, and that was the reason why he didn't upgrade one of his labs. Um, yeah, so I lose no signs, that's great. And Snail Sane loses one, which is also great. And yeah, actually he chose to not cancel the pact, because I can use my two signs to go for the organized religion. I still need a happy face solution, just going for operas might not be enough. And then I can increase more population, go for one more opera take the revolutionary idea, and with the revolutionary idea I definitely should be able to use, uh, develop one more technology at the next turn again, and Snail say now with the Dark Ages and with me developing one technology is very low in science again. He has the breakthrough still, but yeah, I was willing to um, use the pact a little bit longer, and with, I uh, not only can take the revolutionary idea, I also can go for another printing press, increasing my uh, science production as well, so I was confident that I will be able to use the pact, hopefully, uh, in the same way as that snail saying can use it. Then I draw another colonization card, the iconoclasm, and uh, one aggression. Bram plays the reserves for food, actually, he gains only two food because there's not a lo enough um, blood cubes available, and then he increases population. That leaves him with enough science to go for the cavalry man, so that's at least nice that he gets this military technology out. The Colosseum helps him here quite a bit. And then he can build two cavalry men. Now he's, he isn't the weakest any longer, uh, even the strongest after revealing the phalanx tactic. And, no. and then he takes uh, the reserves, and with the reserves maybe he will be able to increase his population again. Snail Saint Seeds and the historic territory is open. I still have some colonization cards in hand. I wasn't willing to bid that much because I might need some colonization cards to defend, but I was willing to send one H2 colonization card away, and so I'm able to win this territory. 
Now this turn, Snail Sane upgrades his lab to scientific method, goes up to 7, science production, corrupts the justice system, the urban growth, and the frugality, but isn't able to develop one uh, technology this turn, which is definitely good news for me. This turn I'm the weakest, so I can um, play the Wave of Nationalism for 6, uh, six uh, additional resources. I also can play the revolutionary idea in this turn, I, uh, it's probably last, the last one for me in H2, so I wanted to transition into Bach, and I wanted to fix my military, because the other players are quite strong now. And the uh, question was whether I want to go for knights, the knights are already have hand, or for the cavalrymen, but I think the cavalrymen are quite a lot stronger, because the, with them I am a lot better prepared for the H3 tactics, and also they, are co they cost us... Uh, no, they don't cost the same amount of science, I don't have the Colosseum. <laughs> With having the Colosseum, Knights and Cavalrymen cost the same amount, but I have the science pact, so the Cavalrymen cost one science more. But still, it isn't a big difference, and I think uh, it could make it a big difference later on. And then I can go for the Cavalrymen and for the Rifemen, thanks to the science pact, so I was able to use this again. And then I can upgrade one of my warriors, after using the military action of Shushka, I can elect Bach now. Increase my population, build one more cavalry man, another cavalry man, and then I reveal the classic army, so that I'm not the weakest. Of course I reveal the tactic now, and Bram might take the rifleman, but taking something for two is really expensive here for him. And also he, um, yeah, he has really not a lot of science available, and Snailson already has four knights and already developed a cannon, so I was willing to reveal this tactic. And then with my last civil action I grabbed the fusion upgrade, because that might help me to, for example, upgrade one of my labs to opera with Bach. Bram seats and opens the immigration. And he first of all did his Spencer warrior, builds one cover in. The reason why he basically has to do it is because he only had two blue cubes here at the moment, which leaves him with not enough blue cubes to play the reserves for three food. But he needs to play the reserves for three food to be able to increase his population, so he has to spend some blue cubes first. And increasing his population is actually quite important for him, because that gives him one additional science, which allows him to just barely get irrigation out before it is discarded and upgrade his food production so that he probably not can increase his population at the next turn because he will lose two yellow tokens, but still with uh, Maria getting this food production up is quite nice, of course. But now he has um, corruption again, of course. Then Snail Sain uh, opens the civil unrest, so two happy face related events uh, are gone now. He can go for the justice system and the selective breeding, so he can use the pact also two times this turn. And I definitely have to be careful and maybe have to cancel it um, at one of my next turns. You can go for two upgrades, the Elm Growth and the Rifleman. Now the H ends. And I'm the strongest, and I actually was willing to send a Zeta Iconoglossum. That of course seems a little bit weird with having Bach, but it might still take a little bit until this is revealed. I have only two military actions at the moment, so meaning I might not draw cards that I want to play. Bram is maybe not in a position where he really wants to push a lot of events. Um, so it might take a while, and at least I have the knowledge about it. So yeah, And I just wanted to push while I'm the strongest. There's no strength event, but a freedom of movement that I seeded into the deck, and I just used this to um, up, to upgrade one of my warriors to riflemen with having two military actions. Uh, that means saving saving one, and it's very important with having that few military actions. And I didn't want to cancel the science pack with, because without it I can't go for the opera, and I think that's one important thing to get out. And like this, I can use the Fission Upgrade to get one Opera very cheaply, upgrade my Culture Production, also the Rome Roads um, have switched now, so I'm at 12 Culture Production now. And after, after increasing my population, I also can go for another Printing Press, and maybe then um, upgrade the last lab to uh, Opera at some point. No. And then I can grab the Breakthrough, and my strategy is also quite important card, with me being at two military actions at the moment. But at least with having the Classic Army and the Great Wall, I'm at 22 strength, and that hopefully should carry me until I can go for the strategy. Also, when we take a look at the overview, 
um, we can see that I have a small lead, but now I have uh, by far the biggest cultural reduction. So hopefully with uh, maybe I can go for a little bit more with Bach and then I, I have just mainly to be concerned about to defend myself and hopefully that uh, might be enough to uh, win the game or to at least yeah, uh, go have a strong position. And then I draw two colonization cards, um, which is definitely quite nice. Bram goes for the Harvard College. That definitely makes sense because he really needs additional science, but it also leaves him with only one civil action left, meaning that he can build one stage, but he will have a lot of corruption and probably can't even produce all of the stuff. Um, yeah, he only produces six resources, so basically he has six corruption. Snail Saint takes the ocean liner service, could finish it immediately, but he doesn't do this, instead he wants to have the military theory. And I definitely agree that the military theory is quite important technology for him, because with me going for Bach, and at the moment at least still being very vulnerable in strength, being able to go for maybe some wars and having the military theory might be very important for Snail Saint. I'm not totally sure if the ocean liner service is necessary, but probably it's still fine, because he has the masonry, so he can finish it very quickly. And he doesn't finish it this turn, and so it will be quite late, but um, he will maybe go for military, then he can use the additional population, and he just has tons of resources, so he can finish it, and he still has a lot of resources available. He can use uh, the science pack to develop the military theory, and then he can get out of corruption with building two stages in the ocean liner service. This turn, uh, I finally cancel the scientific cooperation pact. I can't use it this turn, and yeah, and with uh, Snails and being at seven science production, with having Newton, I finally uh, now can cancel the pact. But before that, I think the pact was quite helpful for me. This turn, I can't increase my population. I don't really want to upgrade my lab to Opera because I want to have eight science available to go for the strategy at the next turn. So I basically can only grab some cards this turn. And that's what I do. I go for the reserves. I go for Churchill. I want to stick for Bach for now. But with the Churchill, I just have some additional resources and science in hand and maybe can use it if I need it. And also I know that the Iconoclasm is coming at some point and then I have already a leader in hand that I can go for when uh, there's the danger that this will be revealed. And then I could just grab the Urban Growth, um, but instead I had decided to uh, grab the United Nations. With my last four civil actions, um, it's probably one of the best wonders for me. I don't really want to go for the Red Cross because I think I will need a uh, lot of population and military potentially, especially if Snail Sane goes for a lot of military. He has very strong resource production and general a very strong economy, six military actions, so that could get very dangerous. And I, yeah, so uh, I am. Uh, don't really uh, want to use any food for the Red Cross. And then the Internet Empire State Building are both probably also a little bit difficult. So maybe the best one of me would be the Hollywood, but it also depends on how much operas I will be able to build. And I have Churchill already, so um, if I finish it, finish it at the end, it might not be that big. Uh, so the United Nations might be maybe the second best one for me, and I can just take it now. I don't really have anything better to do, so I just pick it. Might be not ideal, because I probably still want to upgrade this lab to opera, because it's just so efficient. Um, yeah, and then I uh, that only is 12 culture, but it might help me to evaluate an impact, and it's just nice to have this option and already have a wonder. And then I just keep the two colonization cards in hand. I do draw two impacts, but both of them are not really uh, impacts that I want to play. Both of, both of the other players have tons of resources available, so it might be that they build a lot of military units and have a big competition. And Brom has already quite a lot of uh, wonders, so the impact of wonders would be quite strong for him. This turn he can finish the Harvard College, increases population, takes the computers, and builds one cavalry man. Maybe he uh, wants to go for computers then at the next turn. And he also grabs the communism, he still needs the government form, and maybe he can go, go for a cheap revolution with the communism. Snail Sane grabs the democracy, maybe um, no, he has the theocracy, so that would be a nice upgrade for him. Finishes the ocean liner service this turn, can use the ocean liner service, goes for the rifleman, builds one, increases population, um, 
builds another lab, going um, up to 10 science production, and then increases population another time. But he does not take the air forces, so that's definitely something he could have taken, maybe instead of the democracy, because he has six civil actions, he has Newton, the democracy, while of course being nice, he can't go for it at the next turn, so the air force might be the more important pick. And maybe he could still somehow manage to get out of corruption. This turn I finally can develop the strategy and finally I will be able to draw three cards in H3. And then I can take the reserves, I can take the patriotism, I just want to take as many resources that I can use for military as possible. Um, because I think maybe Snail Sane could still come back with just going for a big wonder and big impacts. But I think the main way how I could come back is with military, so I want to prepare for this. And then I also can take this Air Force, and if Prom takes the other copy of Air Force, Nelson actually will miss out on Air Forces, so it might come back to haunt him that he didn't take it. And yeah, so. Uh, and then he actually has not that big of military potential. Yeah, so the Air Force I definitely also want to take. And then first I thought I might want to increase Pop, and then maybe. Uh, up to this upgrade, but I just do this upgrade and then take the urban growth. So I take a lot of cards again, basically in the last two turns I um, not. I did, the only thing I did was upgrading this to opera and maybe increasing my population once so that I and developing the strategy. Apart from this I only did take cards. So that's a little bit dangerous, but I also have a lot of civil actions and I just think every additional resource that I can get is nice and I get this for one civil action, so I think it's a nice deal. I could uh, instead also increase my population, even build an additional opera, but I, as I said when I talked about the Red Cross, I think I want to have as many population available for my military as possible, so I uh, yeah, don't want to um, mm, yeah, I don't want to commit another worker into opera uh, at, at this turn. And so I do this upgrade, which is a little bit awkward with the United Nations later on, but uh, up to this point opera will pr have produced already quite a lot of culture. I do draw another impact, the impact of Harmony, that uh, could be, uh, be a nice impact for me. Also the modern army is a very nice draw, I have the cannons in hand, the air forces with Trudge, I might be able to get all of those technologies out, and then with the modern army I definitely should be able to defend myself. Maybe I can even go for this war, but it will be difficult with only having four military actions. Brum seats and opens the vast territory, uh, Snail Sane is able to win it, but he actually has to send his whole army with knights. But if he can transition to another tactic, it definitely might be worth it. If not, then it's a little bit questionable, I would say, because he had a very strong um, yellow bank already, has the ocean liner service. Of course, it might help him with the Red Cross, but still, um, it, I think it would be quite expensive. But if he can now transition maybe into positional army, then it definitely is worth it. And if not, he always can transition into the heavy cavalry, then of course he... Yeah, could have used two of those knights, but it's still better than just rebuilding the heavy cavalry. Bram goes for the modern infantry, that allows will allow him to go for the classic army. He also takes the air forces, increases population, builds one, upgrades another one, upgrades another one, that gets him out of corruption. Then Snail Saint seats, and a Ravages of, of Time is revealed. Snail saying we lose the pyramids, maybe that's the reason why I wanted to go for the democracy, because with losing the pyramids, um, yeah, he actually would have only five civil actions. And he actually, of course, can go for democracy the next turn if he does a revolution, and that's exactly what he does. And with Newton he will gain one civil action back. Then he increases population with the ocean liner service and normally, and then he actually can get out of corruption with uh, building two riflemen, two knights, and... Uh, yeah, adopting the classic army tactic, so that definitely uh, did work out quite nicely for him. He has no the democracy and was able to get out of corruption, won the colony, and it still might be nice, for example, if he gets the Red Cross. So he didn't, uh, was not able to transition into positional army or entrenchments or something like this, but maybe at the end it was still worth it to send the whole army away. This turn I see the impact of Harmony, and uh, de the developed territory is revealed. I was willing to send one unit and one card. I don't think I was willing to bid both cards, because I have to be careful still. But I was willing to send one. I can send away the cavalryman. 
And this turn I can finally go for Churchill. I had to take a little bit of a risk because the Iconoclast might have been revealed, but um, there are also um, three other cards, so it's a 25% chance. And I was not punished for it. Now I can go for Churchill this turn because the Iconoclast might be revealed. And then um, you know, I have Churchill and don't lose Bach. And also I want to use Churchill this turn because now after sending one cavalry man away it's the perfect opportunity to make a transition to the modern army. And then I can use the resource and science from Churchill nicely, go for one cannon, reveal the modern army tactic and then I can grab the reserves, the revolutionary idea. And I also wanted to have the multimedia. I also thought about um, grabbing the engineering. But yeah, it might be nice for some impacts but I don't have those impacts in hand. And I just thought that with the urban growth, with, with all of those reserves, I uh, could maybe upgrade one of those printing breasts to multimedia. And it also might be nice for some impacts. So at the end, I'd rather want to do this. Of course, there's not a multimedia coming down the row, but um, it's not for certain that I will be able to get this, especially Snail Sane. Um, might just go for one multimedia. I do uh, draw the impact of architecture, so I get rewarded for my multimedia pick, because this impact will of course be quite nice, especially uh, if I'm able to upgrade those printing presses. Bram opens the Iconoclasm, so that of course was perfect timing for me. Both of the other players lose uh, their H2 uh, leader. And oh, Bram also goes for a revolution, already two revolutions in H3, that's definitely something we don't see too often. but. Um, uh, it looks a little bit odd at first uh, for Bram, but I think it makes a lot of sense what he does here, because he goes for one upgrade, uh, copies the classic arc army tactic, and then disbands one cavalry man to fix his happy faces. Also, he finally was able to get rid of his Machu Picchu. Uh, I mean, at this point, of course, he probably would still like to get the additional food and resources, but yeah, he uh, can't really afford to lose the Colosseum. And yeah, and the reason why the revolution is that nice for him is because after his turn he has 13 science, he has exactly 14 resources. So if he has a war, and with what he did it definitely looks like he has a war, at an, he can at the next turn declare war, go for air forces, build two of them, and that is definitely quite some strength. Especially if you're uh, difficult to reach for snail sane because he missed out on the air forces. Snail Sane seeds and a popularization of science is opened, and Snail Sane gains the most out of that. And then uh, use the frugality, he can get a lot of additional population after getting the vast 2 and having the ocean liner service. And then he builds two knights, takes the modern infantry, develops the modern infantry to build one, and upgrade, nee, build, uh, build another one. It's now 45 strength, and then he destroys one lab, that is of course quite costly but uh, he maybe wants to have as many resources available as possible. He does not take the reserves, and you know, it uh, also doesn't look like he has a nice H3 tactic that he can tr transition into. I mean, after having those knights, it would have been maybe difficult anyway, but um, yeah, uh, it is definitely looking dangerous now for Snail Sane. Also, when we take a look at the overview for a moment, we can see that I have quite a big culture lead now already, um, maybe still possible for Snail Sane to catch up peacefully, but with me having modern RV and Armin with him ha having no air forces, he definitely can't go for a war himself, and he might actually be in danger to get hit by a war um, no, himself. This turn I did not see the impact of architecture. First of all, I could. But H might end, but might also not end, and I could think about finishing United Nations and evaluating this twice, I, but I didn't really plan for this, because finishing this uh, before the last turn is quite greedy in my position, I, was, I would say, but if I see that I can defend anyway, then it could be something to do. And I'm the weakest, and I might be a strength event in there, I did not really have knowledge about refugees or politics of strength. So, uh, or um, the other strength events, so I uh, um, did not see it, and um, yeah. Of course I could draw another impact, but I also have the United Nations, so if I have two strong impacts available, I can still evaluate both of them, even if the age should end. Then I can use Churchill again to go for an Air Force, to uh, not be the weakest. Didn't really want to build any more military units, because then I would draw less cards, and also I didn't really have to spend more resources than I need to in my military. 
Also, I can be the reserves for food to be able to increase my population another time. And then I can take the fission upgrade, play the revolutionary idea, then I have some hand space again. Sadly, I cannot take another revolutionary idea, but I also don't really need it. And then I can build one more opera, which is of course a little bit greedy, but I think at this point I have nothing to fear. The one thing I've had to be careful about is that I have the patriotism still, because um, I need five military actions if I want to build another army and one air force. And with all of those resources and with my civil actions, I have uh, 27 resources, which is what I need to build this. And I also have the five military actions with the patriotism. And with being able to do this, I would be able to go over 90 strength. And that's definitely a lot more than Brahm would be able to do. So I, uh, yeah, I was willing to go for another opera. And then at the next turn, if the age should end with the fission upgrade, and those reserves, I think I can go for two upgrades and finish the United Nations. And I do draw some more nice impacts. The impact of progress is not that great because Nail Sane is, has some technologies there, but the impact of colonies is a very nice impact for me. And indeed, Bram goes for war over culture against Nail Sane. He can go for air forces, grabs the Peru spots for three, interestingly. Maybe to deny it because Nail Sane would be able to go for it and it would help him quite a lot um, with, his, with his happy face, but also to get some strength. He has the urban growth, so that's. Probably a hate draft, but of course Bram at the next turn can also go for it himself. And then he destroys one lab, uh, another lab, and builds those two air forces going up to 76 strength, and then takes the endowment with this last civil action. Snail Thane has to decide now whether he wants to enter age or not. And of course he has to somehow defend this war. First of all, the historic territory is revealed. I was willing to bid one unit, one air force and one card. And I even get it from one rifleman and one card. I still should be able to defend, even if the age should not end. Still can must enough strength at my next turn and then at the, for especially for the turn after this, when I would have to defend against a potential war. Snail Thane increases population and to defend he builds two knights. One warrior and one more modern infantry and then he also destroys his lab. I'm still not sure if it was worth it for him to go for modern infantry and didn't to not go for the reserves because the modern infantry gave him some additional strength but if he just went for rifleman then he could uh, have gone for one normal instead of one outdated army so the end maybe doesn't make that big of a difference but the reserves maybe would have. But maybe it was difficult because the reserves also would have cost one resource, uh, one civil action more. Then Snail Sane has to destroy a mine, another mine, and then he takes Gandhi. And with going for Gandhi, he is willing to not anti age. He has still better, uh, a little bit better cash production than Bram. So maybe he's hoping that um, yeah, the, having an additional turn will be nice for him. And probably also can't go for that much strength if he wants to anti age. And with uh, Gandhi, he should be safe from a war. Well, Actually, maybe not really, because Bram has six military actions, so he could go for another war and just stay at this amount of strength, or maybe even build one pro sports. And uh, Snail Sane has not that much, so maybe it could even be possible to go for another war, but um, yeah, maybe Snail Sane just has to hope that Bram doesn't have another war. He did draw some cards, but not that many, so yeah, it's probably the best what he can do. This turn I see that, and the impact of strength is revealed. So sadly I get punished for being weakest, but um, I, yeah, I also can't really get stronger. And then at this turn I can use the patriotism to build a rifleman. I don't want to use the resources of Churchill, because then I yeah, would basically only use one, or I would not use the patriotism, but then I would not use the patriotism, so I just want to use Churchill for culture here. And then with my remaining civil actions, I grab the uh, military build-up, the patriotism and the urban growth. Probably make a little bit of a mistake here, or play it not as precisely, because my plan was with taking the urban growth to just, um, no, to just, uh, to be able to go for three multimedias and to finish the United Nations at the next turn. And then I could evaluate the impact of architecture, or just play this in and evaluate the potential other, other impact that I might draw. And with the impact of architecture, um, that should be very strong. However, I would need all of my civil actions to do this, and I did not consider one thing, and that is the Red Cross. 
uh, Brom has some food saved up and I think it is quite likely that he might take it. Also Snailsane may take it with the reserves in hand. It's very, very likely that it will be taken if the, one of the other players has the red cross. Then I wouldn't want to build one stage with it and so I actually can't go for one additional upgrade because I'm missing the civil actions. And with no, not being able to do this, I probably should go for multimedia this turn, because the other option I considered was to go for one upgrade this turn. I don't think two upgrades, that would be too greedy, I still need to leave me with enough resources. And I do get another copy of Patriotism, that, patriotism, that were, that's why I was willing to play the other copy. And yeah, so um, then I probably should go for the additional value just uh, this turn. And because I can't really build to uh, upgrade all of my printing press to multimedia anyway if one of the other players takes the red cross. So that was probably not as precise, so instead of taking the urban growth I should probably develop the multimedia and upgrade one time. And that should, I mean, I remember correctly, should still leave me with enough resource, maybe I could even afford a second upgrade. Then Bram, um, yeah, the war is evaluated, Bram overtakes Snailsane in culture, and then Bram uh, uh, is able to play a blunder, but he has not another war, or maybe he can't, uh, is not willing to go for it. And then he goes for Mandela, takes the Red Cross and then has to delete one of his air forces to avoid an uprising, but he has 12 food thanks to the blunder and um, might be able to potentially build even four stages if uh, not both of us will uh, build a stage. Then Snail's saying also has to avoid an uprising. He could go for pro sports, but I think after getting hit by the plan, he has not enough resources for it. And then he takes the rough idea, the movies, the rockets, the pro sports, and disbands one of his warriors to not have an uprising. Then at my last turn, I can play the impact of um, balance in and also quite a strong impact for me. The international agreement is opened. I, the two strong impacts for me are balance and architecture and I just thought with both of the other players having pro sports available might be um, quite likely that the, uh, the other players increase their impact of architecture. So I rather wanted to evaluate this impact with the United Nations instead of evaluating impact of balance. And then I can build one stage of the Red Cross and I can go for multimedia upgrade one time, two times, and then sadly I'm missing one civil action because uh, if I want to do another upgrade I would have to play both reserves and then I am uh, uh, missing one civil action to play both, upgrade one time and then finish the wonder. So I can just finish the wonder like this. Evaluate the impact of architecture, it's still a very big impact for me. And then I basically can't do anything else. I can't increase my population because I would have to play both reserves and then I don't have the civil action left. don't want to disband anything because the impact of harmony is in, so yeah, I just float the two civil action here. Then Brahm plays the endowment for the arts for three culture, finishes the red cross, goes for bro sports, upgrades one, upgrades another one, builds a religion, builds another religion. Snail Sane increases population, plays the revolutionary idea, goes for tang, uh, for rockets, for bro sports, builds a temple. He could have also built a bro sports with the masonry, but yeah, maybe, I mean, he is probably too much behind anyway, and maybe has to um, yeah, hope that there are not the wrong impacts in. So he just goes for two religions and gains two culture out of that. And of course, if there is no impact in for the bro sports, then the culture reduction is better. And then before the final impacts, I have a very big lead, so there is no chance that one of the other players will overtake me, and also Brahm has a very, quite a big lead against Snailsane, so it is also very, very unlikely that Snailsane will overtake Brahm. Then the first impact is the impact of tech, so uh, that's the best for Snailsane. Then the impact of balance, that's the best for me. We have the impact of harmony. And that impact is also, I think, the best for me. And then the last one is the impact of colonies, and it's also the best for me. So at the end, I'm able to win this game with quite a big lead. And uh, Bram was able to recover, and uh, with the war was able to finish at the second place, and Snailsane at the end lost the game. 
think at the beginning, beginning of age 3, Snail Sane had a much better position. But I think the not grabbing the air forces was probably very, um, quite a big mistake. And yeah, he got punished for it. He kind of needed the air force if he wants to go offensive by himself, which seemed like the best way to catch up to me. And as we saw, it also could be very important to defend himself. So I guess that was a big mistake. And with the air forces, I um, think Ram definitely could not have gone for the war. And I think without a war, um, Snail Chain should definitely be able to end at the second place. Maybe he could somehow threaten to overtake me. Maybe if he draws a war, he can must enough strength. Especially if I don't have the modern army available. With the modern army, I think I should be safe. Now, and I just no, built a strong economy, had a great wall, used Leo quite nicely, and then I were able to, I was able to gain Bach, the opera, and had a, just an easy way to increase my culture. The scientific cooperation pact also created a lot of value, and so I was able to win this game at the end by quite a bit. And Bram, as we saw, the Machu Picchu, I think, at the end caused more problems than it helped him. But at some turns he was able to get out of corruption, and at the end with Maria, with doing this revolution, with somehow being able to develop all of those technologies, he was able to go for war, and at the end ended up at the second place. Yeah. And now, after this game is finished, we can also take a look at the current standings. First of all, we can also uh, take a look at uh, other games that um, finished. And Aaron Green was able to win against Bram and Fightrick on a three-player game. And then there was a very close four-player game where PV4 was able with, to win with one-point lead against Pasclotopia. And Pasclotopia was only uh, four culture um, before Aaron Green and then uh, Fight Trigger lost this game. And with four games finished, all players have two games finished, so a nice uh, point to look at the standings. I was able to win the first two games, definitely had some luck in the four player game, and of course also the three player game went quite well. Um, and so I'm at the lead at the moment, then we have PV4 who won the other uh, four player game with seven points, Pascal Utopia and Aaron Green both have six points. Bram is at 4 points and Fight Rick and Snail Sane both lost their games and are at 0 points. Now, so a good start for me, but there are still a lot of games to come, so I have to uh, still, of course, score a lot of points. And up to this point, the Clicko rating was quite accurate in predicting the standings. Of course, there are only very few games finished, they will probably change quite a lot, but um, yeah, um, I have the best Clicko rating at the moment. Then uh, the PV4. Aaron Green is after that, and then Pasclotopia. Pasclotopia at the moment wins the tiebreaker, but still they are very similar here. And then Bram comes in the click rating, then Fight Trigger, and then Snail Sane. So yeah, maybe the click rating is actually quite accurate, but we will see how this uh, will continue. And of course, um, uh, there will be a lot of results that will not be reflected by the click rating. Now, anyway. Um, I hope it was an interesting game for you and yeah, I hope you're looking forward to the next ones and then have a nice time and see you in the next video.